use of the serial port in order to transfer <coughs> photos. So serial ports, they always had like IRQ conflicts and all kinds of software problems. And of course, there was no native operating system support for these cameras. So you would have to install proprietary software and drivers in order to use these cameras. They often didn't work right. There was lots of problems. And each camera was completely different from the next camera. So there was no standardization in how anything worked. If you had a laptop, you might be lucky enough to get one of these devices that allowed you to use a memory card and insert it into a PC card socket of your laptop, which appeared as a native storage device for the computer. I don't believe any such devices existed for desktop computers. So the beauty of the Mavica was that you could take your photos and then remove the floppy disk and insert it directly into your PC and copy the files off because every computer had a floppy drive back then. And if you compared to a roll of film, you could typically store 20 or 30 exposures on a roll. But if you were going on vacation, it was probably just as convenient to carry around a bunch of floppy disks as it would have been film rolls. I mean, even these old Kodak disk film cartridges only had 15 exposures on a disk. And the Mavica could store around 20 photos on a single disk. Not only that, but unlike film cameras of the time, it was possible to review your photos and then delete the ones you didn't want. I distinctly remember about half the photos I took on my film cameras ended up in the trash after getting them developed. So, you know, everybody's used to their uh, cameras on their phone, and they just take pictures of everything. But back in the days of film cameras, you, you know, you had 24 exposures on a roll of film, and you were pretty conservative as to what you took pictures mm. of. You, you didn't just go around shooting this, that, and the other. You are like, oh, okay, this is a good shot I need to take a picture of. Um, but with the digital camera and having the uh, convenience of the floppy disk, you know, I was going around just taking pictures of everything. And then once I filled up the disk, I either pop a new one in or I take it to the computer and dump it to the hard drive. So, yeah, uh, tons of pictures. And in my business, uh, in the furniture business, you know, pictures are important. When I've got customers in other cities, uh, I used to have to draw stuff on uh, on a piece of paper and send it through a fax machine and hope that uh, hope that they could figure out what the heck I drew. <laughs> but with uh, email and cameras, yeah. Sony originally released two versions of the Mavica in 1997. There was the low-end FD5 and the high-end FD7. Both had the same 640x480 resolution and both had the same 2.5 color LCD on the back. But the FD5 had a fixed focus lens and the FD7 had a 10x zoom, which is really nice. The low-end model retailed for $5.99 and the high-end for $7.99. So, I happen to have the high-end version with the 10x zoom. Now, the first thing people notice when I show them this camera is that it's unusually large and bulky. Despite being 20 years old, there are some things that you're likely to be familiar with. For example, if you hold the shutter button down part of the way, the camera will lock the focus and wait for you to depress it the full way before it takes the photo. At which point the floppy drive will fire up and you'll have to wait as it saves your photo. It does have a flash and rather nice zoom controls as well as a manual focus with an actual knob. The screen does have some menus but there aren't many options to select. <coughs> by 124 pixels, so it's barely good enough to use for menus, and so the LCD was really just good enough for, you know, a basic viewfinder, just to, you know, know what the heck it is you're actually pointing the camera at. You know, another interesting thing is that most cameras, even from this time period, had an option to select different photo resolutions, but you'll notice no such thing in the menus on this thing, but what it does have is uh, field and frame. Now, you may be wondering what the heck that means. Well, you see, Sony didn't use a dedicated CCD sensor for this camera. They actually borrowed one from their consumer camcorder line of products. So the CCD in this thing was one that you might have also found in a handy cam that you take home with your video cassettes. So the actual CCD had a horizontal resolution of 570 pixels, but the vertical resolution is much harder to explain. Since it's designed for interlaced NTFC video, it uses two fields, which are scanned 1 60th of a second apart. So the first field is 245 pixels, and so if you have the camera in field mode, then the resolution is 570 by 245, pretty simple, but <coughs> in frame mode, it will also capture the second field, giving you a total of 570 by 
over 90 resolution. So regardless of the mode, it would always interpolate the images up to 640 by 480 resolution. Now, that resolution doesn't sound very good, but really it wasn't too bad considering at that time, uh, the typical screen resolution most computers were running at was 640 by 480. Now, for example, if I display a photo from this camera, it actually fills the entire screen on the computer <coughs> because, well, that's the native resolution of this laptop. Let me show you an example of a photo that I took in field mode. You can see there's a lot of jagged edges around this area here. Now, here's the same image taken in frame mode. Looks much better, right? So no, 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 it's on my on my end. I apologize, Casey. Uh, do me a favor. Can you run that by me one more time? Walk me through the steps one more time. Slowly. A few milliseconds apart from each other. When you st so if there's any motion, it'll turn out blurry. Okay. In fact, if you notice when I turn on the camera flash, it automatically disables frame mode because the flash only lasts long enough to illuminate one field. Uh-huh. So I wanted to show you a few more photos. So I decided to take a little trip. In a previous episode, I showed mm -hmm. you some landmarks of Dallas Fort Worth, and today mm -hmm. I'm going to show you some interesting places in Dallas. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it was totally overcast on this Sunday in mm -hmm. November, so here's mm -hmm. me arriving at Dallas City Hall. Fortunately, it okay. was on Sundays, and I took advantage of their EV charging provided in the parking lot. It may not seem familiar on this side, but the other side should look familiar to you because it was... I got you. So when you put in mic in, mic one in, you have to have it on, uh, it says monitor balance, right and left, and you don't get any audio out. Got it. And other than that, everything uh, uh, operates properly. Very good, very good. Let me uh, do um, some work on this. It's I got it completely disassembled. I'm going to have it ready for you here real soon, and I will call you when it's ready. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <clears throat> With mic plugged in, we have no audio out on monitor.